has been in that bed everywhere. They're gone. The scope of the show, the scale is so ambitious. A lot of times you show up and the work is kind of done for you. They built a whole subway station that we then flooded in this huge water tank um, at the studio. We had to make the room 90 degrees so nobody freezes to death. People are in their shorts in four feet of water. Because it's a road show, what's challenging is the sheer number of sets and making sure they all get the same amount of attention to detail. And our set deck team have done a really good job with subtleties in there that give you this uncomfortable feeling. But then for a lot of like the you know establishing shots and some of the, the bigger scope shots, we've had to come in and kind of adjust some things and just make it look abandoned. So yeah, the biggest visual effects piece in the show is Ampersand, the CG capuchin monkey that interacts with our main character, York. The Humane Society, for every episode that animals appear in, needs to sign off that no animals were harmed. And they watched our first episode. They said, but well, we can't sign off because we weren't there on the days when you shot with the monkey. We were very proud of that. I think they created a world that is both desolate and spooky and feels like it's filled with ghosts. And this idea of what happens when you're trapped in a building for too long. For the war room, conversations are taking place in public spaces or is running through hallways and coming into the war room, which is designed as a very open space. And we did that deliberately because we also wanted to play with this idea of the privacy and the fact there isn't really any in this environment. On a lot of post-apocalyptic films and television, filmmakers tend to shy away from color. And Olga was the first person to introduce, you know, let's not shy away from color, let's just work on the desaturation of colors. It's not as soon as something horrible happens, everything in somebody's closet is like brown and, and gray. It's about an individual response to one event that sort of sends these ripple effects out. You could be the kind of person that's like, I'm gonna put my bathrobe on and draw the curtains. And then you could be the kind of person that's like, I need to put on lipstick and that's what I need to do to survive. I mean, so much of the story is told by costume. Are you still wearing last night's clothes? Are you filthy from despair? Are, are you trying a little hard with what you're wearing? Everything tells a story. Is it just you or? I'm with my sister. She's by the river. Huh. You served? What? Where do you get the jacket? Kira Kelly, the other DP, and myself have been working really closely to kind of come up with the visual language of the show. You know, from our perspective, one of the big elements is that there's limited amounts of power in the world. It's a challenge, but it's also, it's a wonderful challenge. Windows are, might be covered, but you still kind of push a little bit of light from the outside in. We play a lot with like flashlights or lanterns and things like that. I'm really kind of playing with this idea of conserving light. There was so many meetings in the beginning about Yorick's mask, about like what kind of reflective shield he would have and what the poncho would look like. Take that thing off. On your knees now, hands above your head. When you see it all together, it's just like, oh. 